Welcome back to Ideas and Work at Beyond. We're here, we're here with uh, Helena Abrentis, who is running for mayor of Danbury. Um, I understand the phones have been ringing off the hook with questions, significant, important questions about vital issues facing the town. But I just wanted to put in a small plug. I noticed the weather is going to be uh, better for this weekend. I am having an old-fashioned family picnic at my house. The address, you may want to get something out to write down this address. It's 92 Spectacle Lane, <laughs> 92 Spectacle Lane in Ridgefield, Connecticut from 2 to 5. Uh, on Saturday, and you, the viewing public, are invited to come to my house. It's going to be a fun time. There will be apple bobbing, uh, pumpkin carving. There will be a horse for horse rides. And the thing that I really want is for uh, young families with children to come because I rented one of those bouncing around <laughs> things. I, I'm really shelling those out, are fun. <laughs> shelling out $200 for that. And uh, with my luck, we'll just have like about seven adults, and they won't know what to do with the jumping around <laughs> thing. So that's uh, this Saturday. Hey, it's a free picnic. Why not come? 92 Spectacle Lane. Google it on the map uh, thing. And uh, please come and join us. Um, it is uh, to support Scott Mason, who is the uh, Republican candidate for first selectman. He's running against Rudy Marconi. Um, so there will be a little politicking. Um, actually, Congressman Chris Shays may be stopping by. We don't know for sure. But he might be, so that would be nice as well. So um, enough on the plugs. <laughs> uh, on to these questions. Uh, the viewing public has called in with some, uh, some questions. And one, the general concern is, what will you do if elected to increase parking? And you know that's the same thing that we hear in Ridgefield. Some of the merchants downtown are saying, hey, we're dying because our paying customers are having trouble finding parking places and then they, they, they end up going elsewhere. Apparently this is a problem in Danbury as well. What would you do? Apparently we're losing parking places on Main Street. What would you do to increase parking? Well, um, let me tell you that a, a little over six years ago, um, a bond was approved by the residents of Danbury to build that parking garage over by Library Place. Mm -hmm. Um, finally, they had the groundbreaking and it's starting to be built at this point. And that's a positive thing for downtown because we do definitely need the parking. Also, there's some property right off of Main Street. If we could possibly work with the landowners um, off of Keeler Street, mm -hmm. that would be a great spot to also build a similar type parking garage if the voters would approve something like that um, for additional parking downtown. How did, had that, I know because I'm a little familiar with the, uh, the ice rink mm -hmm. the, that was put in and the parking garage that was built adjacent to that. Correct. Is that, is that not enough? You need additional parking in addition to that? Well, that seems to be a pretty vast parking garage. It, it is a vast parking garage, but the problem is if you're going down a little further uh -huh. uh, downtown, it's quite a walk for some people. Yeah. to have to park in the parking garage and then walk down to the other end of Main Street. So you sort of need to balance it off a little bit where mm -hmm. you have one in one location for the other people that plan on going further down and then you have the parking garage. The parking garage fills up quite a bit also. Really? That entire, what is it, four or five levels? That yeah, there's, there's times that it is very packed. It, it'll be packed and they can't take any more Because cars. you have a lot of um, restaurants and clubs downtown so yeah. people will hang out Downtown. By the way, how has that rink worked out? I know that's been here for quite a few years now. Has that been the boon to the local economy that they hoped it would um, be? It has been. I'm not sure right now what's going on exactly with the rink because of the whole situation that occurred over there. Yeah. But a lot of people were going downtown and a lot of kids um, go down there um, to play hockey. There's yeah. a lot of youngsters that I know of friends that I have who take their children down there yeah. um, to play regularly. And they also have ice skating. They teach ice skating. Yeah. lessons and it's great it's um, a great location the, is the uh, minor league hockey team going to remain here the uh, that I well I don't know about that <laughs> I think that was the name of their, the that name was of their but I, I think that was actually dismantled and there may be another one okay that. so as American you go on record as saying that you will go out of your way to attract top-notch East Coast hockey well to yes the working, area? working with the owner of the ice rink yes okay 
He's a very nice a, man. He's a, a very I, nice man. It's a it's an absolutely gorgeous facility, and um, and I think I think it would be good. Well, it's 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 great because it does give young people, not just young people and old people, yeah. the opportunity to go out there and have a little bit of fun. Something that we don't have a lot of that available in Danbury. Yeah. All right. Uh, what would you do with the school system, and specifically regarding overcrowding in schools? Now, this is a tough one before, it's, because yes. sometimes the cure uh, isn't so good. In Ridgefield, we just spent 150 million dollars on schools, and it's good because there was some crowding in the schools. Um, there was, you know, reports of teaching. They called it art on a cart. In other words, they didn't have enough room for an art class, so they would put art on the cart and they would wheel it into the different classrooms. Right. Um, but we seem to have solved that problem. And and uh, but I'm wondering what you would do about the overcrowding in the Danbury schools. Well, I've, and do you see it as a problem? It is a problem. I mean, when you have a school system that's up to the capacity of 112 percent, then there's a concern. I've walked down the hallways at Danbury High School either to go speak in classes or other situations, and literally during. Um, um, the break where you're going to your next class you have to go with the flow of traffic yeah. otherwise you could get trampled hit, hit on <laughs> and you know and, and we have an amazing school system in Danbury mm -hmm. it is phenomenal but my proposal with the Palace Theater would be one option to help take some of the students uh -huh. out of Danbury High School and put them into a, a sample type charter school where you take the Palace Theater and you incorporate it into the type of a charter school where people could come in and they could learn the arts and they could learn a different aspect because we have a lot of students that do go to college for art, mm -hmm. for dance, for theater and that would be a wonderful location to be able to alleviate some of the stress within that school system mm -hmm. and mo move people around. My, I have a serious concerns because we have approximately 2,142 multifamily units that are going up in the west side. Mm -hmm. Now, when those units are all filled, you have families moving into those units. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I don't know where those students are going to go to school. We have the magnet school now. It's not up to full capacity yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that more students will apply for that program, but that's only a K to five program. Mm -hmm. And then you have the issue as to moving up. And a lot of kids are learning in closets, and that's not a good thing. It's mm -hmm. not a nice atmosphere. And also, you have to have a substantial, a certain amount of students to be able to educate them. When you go to the point of having 30 or more, it's too many to be able to teach everyone in, in a reasonable manner. And, and I've talked to teachers and they've complained about those issues and they've complained that they don't necessarily have a set classroom, that they are traveling in carts. Mm -hmm. and, and, cart. yeah. Yeah. and it makes it, it makes it more difficult for them. And also, they just feel that it's becoming more difficult to teach because a lot of the children are generating a type of an attitude which you didn't necessarily have before. Mm -hmm. Perfect example is when I went to school, the last thing I would want is one of my teachers to call my dad at home and tell my dad that I did something wrong. Because I would be afraid to go home. And it's the same thing with my kids. It was the same way. The last thing they wanted was for a teacher to call me at home and that it, and then I would have to go down to school. But it's not necessarily happening at this time and it's becoming more difficult um, because of the sort of animosity within the community at times and it's a serious problem and it's something that the teachers would really like resolved so there's because no it's respect impacting for authority figures in school at, the at teachers, times not administrators? within certain times yes mm -hmm. that, that's that's something that they have been complaining about um, to me mm -hmm. and they're concerned that just the atmosphere in Danbury is generating that type of animosity. When you see adults behaving that way, mm -hmm. why should a child behave any different than an adult? Right. And um, that's a problem. But one of the remedies that I see would possibly be doing something with the Palace Theater uh -huh. and bringing it into um, conjunction with the school system and I think that would be a wonderful idea and just generate a new type of, of location. You could also put science into that building. Um, just just Im improve some of the programs that we already have within the school system itself. Sometimes when I talk about different movies I've seen, I'm dating myself. Uh, my, my daughter had never seen an officer and a gentleman, and I 
she didn't know what I was talking about, but do you remember the movie Fame? Or maybe yes. it was made in a TV show? Yes. That was a magnet school mm -hmm. for the arts. Is that something you would be looking at for yes. the, the Palace Theater yes. to use that as a performing arts and also yes. and do that? Yes. I mean, I have, to, I have to hold your feet to the fire here just yes. for a second because you're, you're proposing construction of affordable housing. You're proposing construction of, of some schools to alleviate the overcrowding or the renovation, and sometimes renovation can be more expensive than brand new construction. Um, you're proposing uh, um, revitalizing the downtown. You're, you're proposing the construction of new parking spaces. Um, you're, you're proposing increasing uh, um, uh, the police on, on, on bicycles. And the, my, my, my point is, you're making all these proposals. Simultaneously, you're saying taxes are going too high. How are you going to do all this bring, without raising taxes? You bring business back into Danbury. It's almost start, what's first, the chicken or the egg. I mean, businesses start, are going to come back because the downtown's been revitalized and it's an attractive, safe place to go where you're... Your wife and children can go downtown and they're not met by people doing uh, unsorted things down there. We've also lost a lot of police officers within the police department. So basically it's bringing it up to the same level that we were before. Um, we've lost a lot of, of people in that department. Um, we can fill those spaces. It's already in the budget. So you're not um, impacting taxes that way. But you also have to bring business back to Danbury. When you bring the t businesses back to Danbury, um, they bring a higher tax base in. They are paying taxes and that impacts everyone else that lives within the community. The proposal for affordable housing, it's not something that the taxpayers are paying for. That's mm -hmm. money that's coming in. It's a developer that is going in, building those homes and selling it to people. So it's not the city that is paying for those affordable houses. It's not the city that is maintaining those homes. But it is the city that's providing the roads that those people drive on, the school system that the kids... For the seniors, most of the seniors don't necessarily drive. Um, mm -hmm. They're transported a lot of times um, with either buses that they have within the center themselves or that facility. Or if you're downtown, you have the buses to travel throughout Danbury if you don't want to drive, mm -hmm. which is a nice convenience. And if we could work with the Hart Bus Company and increase their routes and take them further out, it would even be better yeah, that for was one, the one seniors. Yeah, one question the caller had. Uh, what are your ideas for transportation for seniors besides the sweetheart, sweetheart. buses? Right, right now a lot of I'm them... I'm wondering why, besides the sweetheart, are, are the sweetheart, they have limited uh, It's they're, they're smaller, and, yes, they're okay. smaller buses, and basically you have to call in and tell them that you need a ride somewhere, and they pick you up and take you to that location. Mm -hmm. But you have to give them enough notice, mm -hmm. which makes it difficult for people just to be sporadic and want to go shopping. And if you had, say, the heart buses, the bigger buses, right. on a more consistent route going through other parts throughout the city, you would be able to transport them more conveniently. And it's something that could be worked with heart and the state of Connecticut. Because those are subsidized, our, right, by yes, the state? Yes, okay. yes. And we have our train station. I would like to try to bring back, if I can work with the state of Connecticut, the um, line between New Milford and Danbury mm -hmm. because that would be wonderful if the seniors could just go on the bus downtown, um, get on the, or get on the train um, station mm -hmm. downtown and travel into New Milford if they wanted to, mm -hmm. um, which is very convenient. It's, it's very reasonable price-wise. Um, for people to travel that way. And uh, usually the, trains, the train companies themselves give senior discounts when they are traveling through that. So, I mean, if we can increase those two things, that would, that would make a big difference within the transportation of a lot of the seniors throughout Danbury. Okay. What will you do to stop the overdevelopment in Danbury? First of all, we truly need to sit down and go through a, de a plan of development. Mm -hmm. It was done when on, on my last year when I was on the Common Council and it needs to seriously be reviewed again at this point. I know that they're proposing one at this point or they, they did recently but I'm not sure that I'm very happy with some of the decisions of some of the things that they did and we need to start looking at some of the pieces of property that people are attempting to develop um, because 
I know that the legislature is thinking at one point to pass some rules with regards to building homes on slopey hills, severe slopey hills, right. because it impacts a lot of the homes at the bottom of the hill. Yeah. And we've had developers that have been attempting to do that um, in Danbury. It has been voted down. And one, some of the reasons why it's been voted down is because the residents have gotten so furious that they have gotten together, they have completed petitions, they have taken them down to the city, they've gone before the boards, and they are resilient people. It's amazing because they do not stop so until those pe individuals hear what they have to say. Because the perfect example um, is a development that was to go up, it was called the Codswell development, where multi-cluster homes were going to go on this hill. And the biggest concern to a lot of the residents that lived on Payton Aram Road is the fact that you build houses up there, you're changing the flow of the water that is consistently coming down that hill, and you have the rivers at the bottom and a bridge. And there is severe flooding on that road as it is mm -hmm. um, today. And so I think if we've you, seen video of that on, on this yes, very program. Yes, that's right. I even went underneath the bridge yes. and uh, demonstrated. Uh, Jiggled some wood <laughs> around. And, uh. but, but situations like that have to seriously be evaluated, and you have to work with the legislature to try to protect some of the land. Um, you don't put something commercial in the center of a residential um, mm -hmm. area. And so those things are critical and we need to but just... What about, what about the development off of, I think it's Sawmill Road off of Exit 1? You're on, talking about the west side? Yeah. Union Carbide. That's already been approved for... I know, it's it been was changed and it's been built. Is this something that as Mayor of Danbury you would have been against and you would have you would have tried to... I would have tried stop? to bring business into that area. Better, you more, had more than high density You had, yes. Mm -hmm. You had a prime piece of property, one of the best pieces of property in Fairfield County. Mm -hmm. That piece of property was zoned to bring in companies, it was zoned for industrial, it was zoned for commercial. Mm -hmm. You could have brought in a ton load of companies into that area, especially because mm -hmm. it's right off of the highway. Yeah. It's easy access to New York and to other parts of um, the, the state. And that piece of property was basically just transposed, it was changed, it changed into residential. Mm -hmm. And so now it's, you know, he, Mayor Bouton claims that, sure, 2,142 houses are going in, they're going to pay taxes, it generates revenue. But the revenue it generates on those taxes doesn't pay for the infrastructure damage that it does to the city. Uh -huh. You have the road stresses use, as you missed. That, yes, you have stresses school. on our road. It's not just the schools. It's the uh -huh. schools, it's the roads, it's our public safety. Mm -hmm our police department, our fire department. Mm -hmm. It's its too much, it's too many people. Whereas if you had a nice, say, Pitney Bowes Research and Development uh, office space there, or you had some nice clean industry, or Bowringer Engelheim yes. took over some of that and put in a business, it's you get the same different. corporate tax revenue, but you're not going to have to educate more kids, you're not going to you know, right. stress the school it does system not, and stress the other Right. Things. It doesn't cost the city as much as it's going to cost the city at okay. this point. You know that. Mayor Bowden knows that. Why didn't he have corporate development come in there? I think I have the answer, but I want to know what you think. Why didn't he have yeah. corporate? There, There is corporate businesses that would come in here if we did the same incentives that we did previously with the seven-year tax deferral. So, Because w what I would suggest, and, and there's some folks I know in, in, in the commercial uh, real estate uh, business, they say that they're not necessarily, uh, there, there's, there's a lot more interest in residential real estate than there is in corporate. Right well, now, if you go up and down Route 7, you'll see sign after sign, square footage available for corporate office space that they're, they're, they're giving very attractive deals to. So it's much less expensive for any company instead of building from scratch to just mm -hmm. lease out existing um, office space. There's a glut of empty office space, so it's difficult. I'm just, you know, being the devil's no, advocate here. No, no, here. no, no. I, but I, uh, in the same breath, boy, you put in 2,000 condo units, and I drive by there all the time. They're already filled. It's it's a problem because you know what the congestion is coming in to Ridgefield into Danbury. Yeah. And that is going to cause more of a problem already yeah. 
than, than we can handle. If, if the city doesn't have the infrastructure to handle something like that, you don't go forward with a project like that, especially if we don't have the space for the school. And, and it was. I mean, if you, if you read magazines and if you look at, at different uh, prime spots throughout Fairfield, which are limited, at this mm -hmm. point, that was one of the best pieces of property for businesses to come into. It was considered one of the best um, through one of the magazines that I read. And we no longer really have that available. And so, you know, things like that concern me. We, need, we do need to maintain some open space. We did that with Terry Weil. Uh, under the prior administration, we put hundreds of acres of land into Terry Weil, a piece of property that people can go, they can enjoy, they can hike with mm -hmm. their families. They do a lot of fun things on that piece of property, have wonderful programs. And it gives you the opportunity to really enjoy Danbury, because Danbury is really a beautiful town. It when you was. you look at uh, the island of Manhattan, and you think how unbelievably expensive every square foot of that island is. And then you think about the, the city planners that, that took Central Park and went just just acre after acre after acre, right in the middle of this just incredibly lucrative real estate market. And they said, no, we're going to set that aside and just have it be a park. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Everyone goes down to Central Park and enjoys that. Yeah. For You'll see people studying. You see people having a picnic. You'll see people playing Frisbee, yeah. uh, walking their dogs, or just having some time together. Yeah. And it's, it's great to go into Manhattan and to see and that happening. And there's some sort of just you know, quality of life issues that, that, that come about it. There was a, um, uh, a, uh, a civil, uh, civic developer, um, Robert Moses, and uh, he was famous for putting in the parkways and so forth in and around New York City. And, uh, I mean, what he went through, the shenanigans he went through to, to make sure Jones Beach was set apart or that these parkways didn't allow commercial traffic. He actually had the bridges built on some of these parkways, like the Hutchinson Parkways, to such a degree that commercial vehicles couldn't go through, even if they wanted to, because he had a vision for what that would be. I think as uh, you know, we look at municipal planning, um, we have to think in terms of that. And sometimes, you know, people are, hey, let's, you know, let's uh, cut taxes, let's do this development, it'll bring revenue, it'll be all much better. And if you try and say, well, no, let's set aside some of this space as yeah. open space, because our grandchildren and great-grandchildren will be able to enjoy it. Yeah. Um, it's a little hard yeah. when you got an election in three and a half weeks. No, it's true, but we do. We do need space for our children. Mm -hmm. uh, my children, will be, one of them will be graduating from college this year and going to graduate school, and the other one, when he graduates, will be serving in the military. Mm -hmm. And I would like them to want to come back to Danbury one day. I'd like them, I'd like to see my grandchildren living here and be able to going outside yeah. and enjoying their time outside, just as I did. Yeah. I mean, I would go to a baseball field, I'd go down to Rogers Park and play in the park, wherever. I mean, we have to provide that space for our children yeah. because sitting in front of the TV, TV playing video games is not the lifestyle that we want for our children. Oh, yeah. I agree. And the video game thing is, is my little bugabaloo as well. Uh, they just get out of the house. It's been reported that the morale of the Danbury police officers are low. What would you do to change that? And by the way, why are the why is the morale of the Danbury police officers low? Is that a fact or is that just a Well, no, it is. It's it's actually a fact. And I think one of the reasons is look at what's happened with the police department and the mayor's office in the last six years. There's been a lot of disagreement and a lot of animosity between the two and it's made it very difficult. You had he it took forever for him to come up with a contract agreement with the police department. Uh -huh. And by the time they finally came to an agreement, the next contract was up. And basically, they just agreed to whatever because they couldn't deal with the whole situation all over again. Mm -hmm. And the first contract was agreed upon by arbitration. Mm -hmm. So an arbitrator made the decision as to what they were going to be entitled to. And you have to have communication between the two. You have to have... Uh, an agreement between the two and communicate with the two departments and I think that makes a big difference. You know, uh, Waterbury, um, I, I believe it was Waterbury, went into bankruptcy and receivership as a result, among other things, of the contract that was brokered between the fire department 
in the town of Waterbury. Sometimes these contracts, especially when you get into pensions and you can agree to it, but when you project it out, yes. it becomes untenable. True. Um, so, uh, you know, everyone loves the police, everyone loves the fire department, everyone loves the ambulances and so forth, but, but I think if you become mayor, you'll realize that uh, these negotiations have to be had and that if, you, if, if they're too lucrative for the other side, it can cause the taxpayers dearly and down the road. It's, it's not a, mer a matter of being too lucrative. You really have to sit down and communicate. You can't just say, no, it's not this way, it's my way or no way. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you, you can... <laughs> you have to communicate with the other side, and that's how things are resolved. That's how they always resolve the contract. When I was on the council for almost seven years, mm -hmm. we went through... Um, police contracts and fire department contracts and they came before the council to get approved uh -huh. after they were negotiated so I mean it's not something that it has to be communicated you have to go yeah. both ways just like any contract from any company yeah. it's the same thing if you want peace within the reins of the departments well look my my, uh, my brother's a policeman I got nothing but love for the policeman <laughs> But uh, when you get these uh, union uh, contract negotiators, if, uh, if you give away the store, it, it, it really hurts you, down the line. You can't, you can't give away the store. You have, okay. to, you have to work together to come up with a reasonable contract. Helena, thank you again for coming in. Thank As you. a matter of fact, um, the, uh, this other side of the table is always open for uh, Mayor Mark, B Mark Bowden. If you'd like to come in to have a discussion among the candidates, uh, I do my best to present the other side uh, in this discussion. But uh, for the mayor and his people, uh, Thursday evenings from 9 to 10 p.m. here on Ideas at Work and Beyond, you're always invited to come in because we'd like to get both sides of the story. Next week... Along those lines, we'll be having John McGowan, the candidate for mayor from the Independent Party, and he's going to be on the show next week. I think hopefully you'll be back. You see yes, I will. And uh, boy, wouldn't it be great if Mark Bowden came in uh, to, uh, to share some of his ideas as well. So thank you again for uh, tuning in. We're here at Ideas of Work and Beyond. You had the free exchange of ideas and opinions. <laughs> To quote, I think it was Bob Grant that said that. <laughs> and uh, all opinions are welcome, and uh, uh, we just like to have uh, uh, an open forum for that. So thank you very much. Helena, thank you for joining us thank again. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. Okay, Good night. Thank you.